Hi and welcome back to Elden Ring Lords Brigade part 15. Today's show for River. We are at the Third Church America in Limgrave. If this is the first time you've watched one of these videos, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you have any tips of your own, stick them in the pinned tips comment. But otherwise, we are heading south towards the building that has the lift that leads to Show for River. Wow, what a mouthful. Okay, cool. Got it in the third take. Very nice. <laughs> I mean, they didn't need to know it was the third take, but yeah, there's a peek behind the curtain for you. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to this kind of round building type dealy. Uh, you might have noticed us picking up some crafting items. As we've said multiple times in the guide before, just hammer triangle wherever you go. Pick up those crafting items. But otherwise, we're descending this lift and we've sped it up for um, your convenience. God, this is a long lift. This is like max speed that I could speed up at as well. And at the bottom, yeah, this there is an excruciating is... lift. This, yeah. Now this area, pretty simple. It's easy enough, but there's a fair few items to pick up. Uh, in this first bit, we're just going to be on Torrid. We're just going to get these golden runes, and then we're going to head over to the east, and then there's some more items. Yada yada. Right, it's nothing, nothing fancy going on right now. Really annoying that I wasn't able to grab that. Useless silver firefly. See, I'm picking more shit up off the ground, as you should be in the habit of doing. Uh, there's a ghost glove wart, there's a finger remedy. As we've discussed, that's what activates the online component of the game. So if you use the finger remedy, you'll see other people's summoning signs if they've decided to stick them down, which, it, because it's Elden Ring, is probably fucking unlikely. And up here is a uh, Smith and Stone 4. Now, there's a bunch of clay yes. men here. Uh, we've met these guys in the other underground, but Ainsel River. Yeah. Now again, we're just we're just not even going to fight them because it's just, it's just not worth it. They're really tanky for what they are. There's some cured meat, and there's some rainbow stones, and then we're going to head up and around. And this is a cool bit, actually. A lot of people might have missed this. Um, so there's a budding horn, which is another crafting item. But you can jump onto this wall. And then over and along. This just feels like you're almost going out of bounds, actually. Which is... So when I discovered this the first time, I was like, Huh, that is cool. But yeah, we're just going to take this up here. And then there's some more clay men. Another item. And then there's a scarab to get. Hilariously, those thrown daggers you just picked up might have been good for killing the scarab. Come to think of it. But I, we're going to... I think we're going to ground slam it. We are. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's satisfying. Crunchy. So that was the uh, oracle bubble um, yep. that summons a little little wall of bubbles. It's sorcery. Um, the bubbles do actually pretty respectable damage. It just doesn't have a ton of range. So it's uh, kind of a niche spell. It's fun, but it's not generally applicable. It's not like the equivalent of a uh, bloodstone dart or something along those lines. But there's a couple more items over here. One item behind the waterfall. Because if there wasn't, it would have been a fucking travesty. It's true. Um, now, some people say that this area of the game is, in fact, uh, maybe a more early game area than people say. But the counter-argument to that is we just picked up a Smith & Stone 4, which is essentially where our weapon has just left. So, I think in reality, <clears throat> we're actually pretty much where we're supposed to be at this point in the game. Um, now, you could have done Ainsel River as soon as you came across it, but we didn't really do that much more before it. But when it comes to Show for River, I think this is probably about the right time to tackle it, frankly. Um, now, just to make a point, those clay men can drop the clay man's harpoon and silver fireflies. And then we're gonna clay man's harpoon is actually not a bad weapon, actually. If you're doing a... Uh, um... I mean, frankly, any kind of build, it has inherent magic damage on it, and it keeps its magic damage and its intelligence scaling, even if you infuse it with something else. So it's actually a really good option for a magic build that uses other infusions as well. So, not bad at all. That is cool, yeah. So, heading up here, there's a grace, and then there's... God, this area is just so big and wide. Oh, so many items to cat to get at this point. So just try and keep up. Now that thing to the left there is um, there's like a kind of sconce on a pillar type thing. Uh, we are going to be having to light the fires on these things, uh, which I think we do this in now. Yeah. So there's like uh, eight of them or something like that. So we need to light the fire on all of them, and then that will allow us to do the boss. 
Yeah, you are right. There are eight of them, and they correspond to the eight pillars on the staircase where we picked up the map. Every yep. one of those sconces you light, one of those pillars will get a light at the top of it. Once all of them are lit, you can access the boss. So, yeah, now we're going to head up and around to the right of these stairs. Or left, I guess, if you're looking down the stairs. Question mark. But, um... Oh, apparently I missed something, so I missed. Yeah, it was a glove wall. You had to go back for it. I could have got that any time. I don't know why I done that. Bye. Uh, so there's a glove wart too. We're gonna pick that up. Well, there's a ghost glove wart too, even. And I think there's a shield. There's like the red hawk shield or something up here. Inverted hawk like. shield. I'm gonna call it the red hawk shield because it's red. Are you gonna call it something wrong then, aren't you? <laughs> It's a nickname I gave it, alright? Shop. Now, there's an arteria leaf and the red heater, sh red hawk heater shield. And um, now we can just, like, jump back down here and then we're back at the grace. Yeah, there's um, got to be a lot of that. It'll be sort of start at the grace, do a little loop. Start at the grace, do a little loop. Aye, um, aye. Now, head in northeast into this area. There's, like, these electric ball things. Try and stay the fuck away from them. They actually do quite a bit of damage. But otherwise, there's a somber smith and stone, too. Apparently, I didn't take my own advice. But, um, yeah, just av avoid being hit by them. So it's not as long as you're on to torrent and you're on the move, it's it's fine. Like, yeah, like, they're it's generally hard not going to hit you. Aye, like, it's harder on foot if you're just running about. But I think this is a cured meat. Bastard. You're close. You're fucking close. Though. It's close. But there is a sconce up there. Now, these are ancestral followers. I'm not sure if these ghost ones actually drop anything. So um, Yeah, they do. Do they, they? Do drop the normal drops. Yes. Well, if that's the case, then they can drop the jawbone axe, the fur raiment, fur leggings, great horn hammer, dwelling arrows, the great horned headband, thin beast bones, and budding horn. Aye. And we just picked up a cookbook there. This is directly above, pretty much, where the grace is. So we've come back to the grace, and now we're doing another little loop, as I said. And I think this is where we drop off the side of the staircase. And below here, I think, is the horn bow? Question I mark? think so, too. It is a bow of some sort, yeah. Oh, and you can't ride between these pillars, by the way. Yeah. You have to go around them. The torrent's too big to fit. Uh, that was a Trina's Lily we just passed on the ground there. You should probably pick it up. But, uh, aye, so there's a Golden Rune 4, and now we're heading up this little hill, and now this is where Blyde is, and he will show up if you have activated Rani's quest. Which So this is why we've done this after Rani, because it does make sense that... But we just didn't want to fucking come back here, so we just do it all in one go. But also, like I said, I think the difficulty is this is where it's supposed to be. Despite the fact that the game presents you with doing this area right at the start, if you were to come here at Limgrave, you'd be getting your fucking shit pushed in, I'll tell you that. So, aye, you just you just do it when you're ready. And now you are ready. But taking this spirit spring up here, there's a Ghost Glove Wart 3. And we're going to keep going down uh, this broken bridge and uh, get another stone sword key. Mm, how cool for us. This little section of platforming can actually be quite tricky. As you can yes. see, the platforms are narrow. It's it's easy to fall to your death here. So if you do, don't worry. You're not you've not lost much time. Grab these dwelling arrows, by the way. Um, and uh, also, use... don't jump on the top of this pillar. Don't do what we're doing here. It's a waste of time. You don't need to. Yes, let's just 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 go onto the normal bit of ground. <laughs> I was like, well, this is cool, and then I'm like, oh, well, it actually wasn't cool. <laughs> it was it was actually negative cool. We lost cool by being on Aye. the pillar. So heading into, I think this is a little uh, island bit in the middle of, I mean, I mean, it's the shallowest lake imaginable. I guess it's part of the river or something. But follow what we're doing very carefully. So we're heading towards slightly right of those this uh, pyre here. And then we uh, picked up a ghost glove wart heading towards this tree. Picked up a golden rune too. We're going to kind of follow the edge of this path for a shield grease. Wow, that's fucking useless. Uh, and now there's a tree here for a golden rune three. And now heading up towards right at the end, there should be another uh, sconce that we can light. 
yeah, as with other areas, this is another... Um, this portion of this area, at least, is sort of going from A to B to C yep. to grab, this, grab a bunch too. of items along the way and uh, light the sconces as you go. We're just ignoring all the enemies here. Um, picking up these Smith and Stone 3s are actually actually fairly useful. Um, more dwelling arrows at this fallen pillar. On the fallen pillar, there is a uh, dapple to cure me, and now we need to run up the pillar, avoiding getting shot off this fucking thing. And uh, Sober Sister Stone 3. Two! Motherfucker. You were so close. So, well, there was a sending gate up there. We do use that at some point. Now, at this little pyre here, you can hide in this side, and then you can activate the, uh, the range of these electric guys, but you can use the pillar to hide from its attacks. So, aye. And that Just do, do like we do. does give you a good demonstration of what they're actually doing to you. Um, aye, aye. I did not know they did that the first time I ever came here. Here's the next grace, by the way. I did not know that the first time I ever came here, and I got obliterated by them. And I thought, oh, okay, let's just never go near there, near them again. And then it took me forever to get this pillar, because I was thinking, how the fuck do I get that without dying? It took me about an hour. So, Not heading going. somewhat west, and um, there's another fire that we can light, so we're going to do that. Yeah, directly across the river from the one with the electric balls next to it. Apparently we're not going to do that. Oh, no, apparently we are going to do that. What the fuck was I doing? But okay, aye. So we're going to light this. Um, it, you'll notice that we're just completely ignoring these ancestral guys. Like, there's just so many of them that it's just not worth fighting them. Um, if you were to fight your way through all of them, you, eventually you're probably just going to run out of healing items. So just run away from them. Like, we're just grabbing shit, so fuck it. Yeah, I mean, the only ones you've really got to worry about are the ones with the bows. Because as you saw, they have spectacular range and damage and accuracy. You're not avoiding it. Indeed. Um, um, I will say, actually, that the ones with the bows do... They make a little sound cue. There is a sound of the bow charging up. So if you can hear that, take cover. So, these ancestral guys... Okay, maybe we're slightly higher level than we need to be, but... Aye, because our ground slam is doing quite a lot of damage. Which does... It is weird that where Rani's quest starts and where, why Blythe comes here, the difficulty is definitely in a weird skew that doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of the progression of the game. But otherwise, there's a sliver of meat. And another once you're making your way, Once you make your way around these rafters... Um, and try to avoid falling off like we almost did. Um, yeah, I'd have been so yeah, raging if I fell off. <laughs> you just go through the structure and you'll hear music playing as you come through. That music signifies that there is a merchant nearby. Um, this one has a couple of uh, a couple of decent items. Some cookbooks, uh, Larval Tear, the Chotel, Stone Sword Keys. Um, yeah, he's got some good stuff. Um, worth having. Uh, worth visiting, I should say. And there's some hefty beast bones, just a crafting item. Now, remember, you can kill the merchants, and they'll drop their bell bearing. You can take that bell bearing to the Twin Maiden Husks, and then the Twin Maiden Husks will then sell the uh, the merchants' items. We also picked up a Smith and Stone 4, which is very good. Uh, so, I now we're at... I don't, I don't even know where I would describe this part in terms of the orientation of a hole in this area. So hopefully you just fucking know where you are. But, um, if you are following, if you are following the wall of the cave, so to speak, so the wall that's in front of us now, we are between the first and second graces at this right, point. Right. So there's a finger remedy. I think we picked up another golden rune or smith and stone. And yeah, then... we're just cleaning up the last of the items that we didn't get on our way to grab the um, sconces. Aye. So that there was uh, another glove warp that we picked up and I think that was it there's no more items behind us so we are going to warp to this grace and then push ever forward uh, northwest ish and there's an item on this rock well on a body next to the rock which is a golden rune fort there's a lot of golden runes in this area fucking hell in, on that note then it may actually be worth coming here early because you get some decently valuable golden runes um, and largely you haven't fought anything you've just been avoiding it so 
That is a fair point, actually. That is a fair... I think we've barely fought anything, actually. Now, we just got square off there. Now, if you're using a longsword class weapon, square off is fucking awesome. Probably, uh, it's somewhat equivalent to, uh, Lion's Claw, in the sense that it does an inordinate amount of fucking poise damage, so... It is actually a very good Ash of War to use if you're using the kind of weapon and go on. Now we just let another pyre there. We're jumping up this little bit of hill. And uh, there's another pyre here. Next to a rat and some more of these warden guys. And that was the last one. That was the last one we needed. But there's still some more we need to clear out at this end. So making your way through these woods here. There's a couple of items. Um, that one there specifically, and there's also some of the archers we were talking about, as you can see. Um, there yeah. are two of them at the far end, so try your best to sort of stay out of their line of sight, exactly like we're not doing. Um, Look, man, they're everywhere. They just... could be... It's like fighting the Viet Cong, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, um, some, something, something in my face when the trees start speaking, ancestral follower. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we grab the grace there there's a little loop to do around this big stone platform here um i oh, there. there was no you such could, loop you can do a complete nope. loop or you can just double back and then there's the clarifying horn charm are we i thought um so we, I, I definitely would come back here there's another bit to do okay right okay we're just grabbing this shit and coming back we should probably actually have just done the other shit first it might have been slightly like a minute more efficient but fuck it, it doesn't matter so now you can see that kind of land bridge that leads over to that other section so now we're going to go over there and over there you're going to go to the singular most disappointing room in the entire game ah um, yeah, it's a wee bit in it it's just why is the only thing in there a rune arc that should have been the entrance to a secret cave or it should have been a way to link knockron and Cheer for a, or something. They should have done something with this room. Fuck it, the merchant should be here. Anything. Just why is it just a rune arc? It's so upsetting. Lincoln, uh, Ainsel River and this area, I think, would have been good in some capacity, right? That would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Anywho, um, up this slope, there's a golden seed, and then you need to jump out onto the buttress. Now, be careful when you're doing this, because it is very easy for Torrent to fling you into the void. If you die here and you were riding Torrent, I don't blame you. I blame Torrent. <laughs> I um, blame the fucking programmer that made Torrent. Pure Witcher 3 ass fucking controls, what's that about? Right, okay, so now we're getting our stone sword key, and we're just going to warp back. Wait, wait trying to get back over that buttress. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm not playing that game. Nah. <laughs> but we can upgrade our flask now. That's cool and sexy. So now we are going to... I think we're going to use ascending gates now, and I cannot fucking remember. Oh, yeah. It sends you to, like... A, the bit that we were just at, but, like, an inaccessible part of the bit that we were just at. Yeah, it's, like, the upper portion of Schaefer River. Yeah. Um, so specifically like this the, ascended gate it's like the middle layer between Nokron above you and Shifra below you aye aye that's a good way of putting it so on Torrent we're heading west I guess and uh, essentially into this building here I think we just ignore the enemies we do yeah it. we're just here for the scarab and the item in the corner which is the great oracle bubble that you get from this. Um... And a Somber Smith is on 5. Damn. That's a decent upgrade for this point in the game as well. Yeah, it is. Um, so if you are using a Somber weapon, if you're using the Bloodhound's Fang, like uh, a couple of people were re recommending in the comments, myself included, um, yeah, that would be your easy access to a plus five upgrade. So you could head straight to EG, get get it to plus four straight away, come here, get it to plus five, and then you've got a decent power boost for this stage in the game. Gold rune seven. Damn, fat. Rolling in it. Over at the end here, there's a couple of dragon wound grease um, that's sort of hard to get to. Or is it just the one dragon wound grease? 
What are the Fallen Hawk soldiers? In brackets, Fallen Hawk soldiers. So Fallen Hawk soldiers are the little, you know, the boys. Yeah. Oh, they're not even here. For some reason, I've got this in. Right. Yeah, I was so confused. Right. There is no Fallen Hawk soldiers in this area. No, no, they're in the section above us um, that aye, we can't aye. get to quite yet. That comes later. So there's a Ghost Glove Warp 5 as well. God, that's some pretty big upgrade materials up here. And it's so, all accessible straight away. Yeah. So this is another one of those enemies that we fought in the Ainsel River. Uh, the boss guy, the Dragonkin Soldier? Yep, correct. I'm so smart. Okay, so there's... There is a, a very shithead way of doing this where you can use poison mist on it and uh, you can just do this and uh, wait a very, very, very fucking long time. <laughs> or... I mean, it was worth showing you that you can do this because if you're fighting it and you are going to struggle, you can just sneak up on it and poison it. Yes, so that it was will taken out. A wide berth around it whilst crouched down, and you have to approach it from its arse whilst crouched. But otherwise, um, it still doesn't know we're here. So even if you're going to find it legitimately, you should do this, and then you can get yourself all nice and buffed up, and then you can just start to stab a fucking sword right in its asshole. Yeah, something to note about this enemy type. Um, if you get a good look at the front of them, they're, uh, they seemingly don't have a stomach. They don't have looking by the looks of it any internal organs if you try and attack the front of them where the sort of hanging belt is um they won't take any damage you have to hit the legs or the hands or the face you can't hit the torso so something you might have noticed there is that because we got the sneak up on it and we put all our um like we've got our katanas we've got the imps we've got blood flame blade we actually done a fucking gigantic amount of damage to it because we just took took off a chunk with bleed we were chopping away at behind of it as it was getting up. So we managed to get in a whole load of free damage for essentially nothing. And then we get the Dragon Salbert for that and Marika's Scar Seal, which is kind of the opposite version of the Radigan Sore Seal that we're currently wearing. Um, it buffs the other stats that the Radigan's one doesn't. We also picked up the Dragon Halberd, like you said. Um, that's a very decent weapon. It builds up Frostbite, it can deal lightning damage, which most enemies are um, at least not resistant to. Um, maybe not weak to, but not resistant to. Um, warping away back to the Round Table Hold, probably going to upgrade our Spirit Ashes and our weapons if we can. We should um, be able to. But yeah, the Dragon Halberd. I would imagine so. At least, yeah, Lutel. We can get her upgraded. Lovely. Um, yeah, the Dragon Halberd, though. Um, builds up Frostbite, does lightning damage. Um, it's a Halberd, so it does decent stance damage with its heavy attacks. It's got good range, thrusting moveset. Yeah, it's all round. Pretty great weapon. So we have uh, 10 Golden Rune 4s to pop. And um, we can probably get a level out of this, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I no. hope so. Okay, so we're about to buy something off Corrin. We are going to buy Rejection from Corrin, and there's a big, solid reason for that. Um, it will just make something that's coming up a little bit easier, I guess. Or, like, it's a possible cheese method for something that is way harder than it should be. And we were able to get another level out of that, so we put our Endurance up to 37? Or was it 27? One or the other. Probably 27 at this stage in the game. But to be honest, I wasn't paying attention to the level up. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so I cannot fucking remember. <laughs> Ultimate guide, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, at this grace, we are equipping uh, the Sacred Scorpion Charm. We put on Sacred Blade because the next boss we're about to fight is very weak to holy damage. So as a result, I mean, it's the boss isn't really difficult to begin with, right? But... Um, it's just a way of making things easier because Sacred Blade is fucking awesome. So, I right, we're going to be doing a fuck ton of damage to this thing. To be clear, this is the boss that the sconces gave you access to, not the Dragonkin. This yes. one specifically. Correct. So, it will transport you to this area. And this boss actually has a, a bunch of like interesting mechanics that just never really come to 
any kind of proper head, I suppose. Now, we're going to use Littell for this guy because the imps just won't be able to really reach it. Um, and we should probably have buffed before coming in here, but regardless... Um, I mean, that was some alright damage from Littell, actually. But you're going to see Sacred Blade doing a ton of damage to this guy. Uh, this boss also has a self-heal mechanic. Uh, I yeah. don't think this one does. Oh, is it the other one, one does? Okay. Yeah. So there's two versions of this boss. There's the Ancestor Spirit and the Regal Ancestor Spirit that's actually a Remembrance boss. Um, and the Regal Ancestor can self-heal um, and also gets a bunch of attacks in its quote-unquote phase two um, that this one does not have access to. So, I mean, as you can see, the um, the holy damage is doing a, just so much damage to this guy. Um, get, your shield is actually pretty solid against this guy. Uh, all of his attacks are physical, I think, aside from these ones. Yeah, but these are more of an AoE than something you'd try and block anyway. Aye, so you just get, get out of the way of that thing. Um, I mean, it does do a lot of stand stamp, like, like the endurance damage on your shield. But otherwise, I mean, ultimately, just spamming a bunch of Sacred Blade at it, like, you can... It's one of those things that's so effective, you can just quite easily trade hits into the boss. And you get the Ancestor Follower's Ashes. Uh, Ancestral Follower Ashes, pretty good, actually. But now we're going to come and do what's on this platform, um, which requires... Is it two Stone Sword Keys, or is it just the one? I'm, I'm going to say two, to hedge my bets. Yeah, looks like it. Um, but yeah, you spend your two stone sword keys, you get access to this lift, and this takes you all the way up and out into an area of Kaelid that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to get to. Aye, so this is actually quite a fairly secret area, sort of, there's like a kind of interesting quest thing coming up. So grabbing the grace, and then we're going to quickly grab a few items. Uh, but otherwise, in this area, there's some golems, uh, as we've fought before. Uh, they can drop the golems halberd, the golems great bro, gay, gr the golems gay bro. <sighs> great bro. Thank you. The great arrows, they can drop smith and stones, but you're, you're not going to use them to farm smith and stones, that's fucking stupid. And uh, then golem great arrows and golem magic arrows. Oh, no, those ones Explain don't drop. a little bit about what... Explain a little bit about what we've just done there. We rode up and around the cliff because there is a rune bear in this area, and for some reason this one is particularly fucking deadly. So avoid it at all costs. Just we use the glyphs that things. can't reach you. No, nah. god no. <laughs> in a similar way to how my maths teacher in high school said, just ignore... I'm not even going to teach you logarithms, you're just going to ignore that question on the test. It's the same with rune bears, you're just going to ignore them. <laughs> That is incredible. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, you're better off learning something that isn't just going to be one question, so... Amazing. <laughs> I'm just going to leave this gap in your knowledge. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and lo and behold, I have fucking no idea what logarithms are, but we get the spiked palisade shield from underneath that golem. Uh, not a bad option if you're going to use a great shield because it's a great shield that on strike deals um, bleed buildup. So you can actually bleed infuse it, use something like shield crash or shield bash, and then you can pretty effectively kill things using only a great shield. It's very fun. Is so it effective? Eh, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hiding behind these roots just to avoid being shot off the golem. And I think we quit out just to make sure we've um, eliminated its aggro, because obviously quitting in and out will reset the enemies to not be attacking you. But now, there's three red summon signs that we need to take care of. Now, the, the there is no good method for fighting these guys. You have to do it all in one life, so you can either do the cheese method that we're going to show you just now, or wait until way later in the game where you just completely annihilate them, right? So, rejection quite good actually like yeah they do roll about a lot but if you can line them up at the side of the cliff you can send them flying because they do a lot of damage they've got a lot of health uh, they are in fact definitely scaled for much higher level than what we are at this point in the game but rejection makes it doable as you just saw because they go fucking flying bang done easy peasy 
Now we just need to do this three times rather than try to actually fight them three times. Um, because fighting them really is tough. Even when you're way later in the game, it's still tough. So, like, you'd have to be significantly higher level to make these three guys in one fucking life, quote-unquote, easy. So, instead, we're going to say, fuck you, game. We're going to give the tools. We're going to use the tools that you gave us. And we're just going to go, bang, you're fucking dead right off the edge. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to elaborate on. Uh, first, th I think the reason these are so tough is because they're not actually scaled for Kaelid, they are scaled for Grail's Dragon Barrow, the area where we rode past everything right away in Episode 1, um, because everything is way too tough for us to fight. Uh, two, to get these red summon signs to appear, you need to speak to the Great Jar, um, who I don't think we've really gotten a good look at yet, but it's a big pot boy standing in front of Kaelid's Coliseum. Um, something to take note of. And three is the NPCs that you're seeing here. We're going to show you the other method for um, manipulating them here. Yeah. Um, but these enemies um, are fixed for, for us because we did the guide offline. If you're doing it online, you will be fighting phantoms of other players. So, if you want the easiest possible time, you want to be fighting the fixed NPCs because then you know what to expect. As you can see, you're coming over to this little cliff, you're hiding between the fog wall that appears and the um, face of the cliff. Um, and if you wait there long enough, the NPCs will try and reach you, and when they attack, they will roll to their deaths. Yeah, um, now, something to... Uh... Bear in mind here is that we wanted to show you the rejection method because that's almost certainly not getting patched out of the game. This theoretically could if they ever decide to like overall tweak like in-game AI for NPCs. So this might not be doable come a certain point in the game. Uh, which is why I want to show you both versions. This one is definitely, I would say this is probably the better method than the rejection method. It's certainly a lot easier. Um, but the rejection method has been the easiest other method. And trust me, I tried so many different ways to make this easy, but this is just the best way of doing it, this in rejection. So, either that or you can just try and fight them toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but why the, Why? Why would you do that? I, I, what do you gain? <laughs> well, you gain the same thing you do if you fight them like we're doing right now, so why not take the path of least resistance, you know? Mm. Now, for whatever reason, I've edited this a weird way where apparently I done two rejection methods and then done the cheese method and then I'm going to show you the last rejection method. See, there's a question marks. Uh, ignore my stupid editing, but I. And the three base builds are also quite difficult. You've got this guy who's using a giant mace who trades hits into you quite well. You've got a guy that tries to poison you and then you've got the, uh, the spell slinger guy. But as a result of doing this, you get the Great Jar's arsenal, which massively increases your carry weight. Yeah, the equivalent of Havel's Ring from the Dark Souls series, if you're familiar with that. Um, uh, now yeah. we're just entering the Kaled Colosseum. This is the second of the three Colosseums in the game that we can get to. You interact with the altar, you unlock this arena for PvP. And you can see where we were on the map there, just at the northern edge of Kaled. So now we are heading back to Leone of the Lakes. Uh, because the next part is the um, Ruined Strewn Precipice. precipice. But otherwise, yeah. this is the build, and apparently we increased our endurance to 30-something. All right. Bye. That's it for this part. And okay, there we go. That's seal forever. Done. Join us in part 16, where we're going to be doing the Ruined Strewn Precipice. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.